Oh, that looks promising. Ooh, and, and here's the beast. No shui bow. This, yeah. this, this is the holy <laughs> computer. Alright. This is uh, an Apollo guidance computer. Um, this is uh, one of the original 15 uh, computers built. This particular one came out of uh, the first man rated lunar module, T88. So we have flip tray B, which is the, the memory mostly. And to reveal the back lane, which is superb. Very well done. Was it done by machine or was it done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was done by a Gardner Denver automatic wire wrap machine in uh, three layers. It, it's in superb condition. While we have tray A with the sunny side up, uh, might give us a quick tour of the modules we see. So we have uh, the 24 logic modules. Uh, which contain all of the NOR gates. Um, and then there's five interface modules which translate between the logic levels and the logic modules and the spacecraft connector. So those, those are actually analog, right? Yes. Right. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the four volt power supply and the 14 volt power supply. Okay. So uh, the first two logic modules here are uh, clocks and timing. Right. Um, three, four, five, and six are the uh, instruction decoding. Mm -hmm. um, and then 7 through uh, 11 are the central registers and the arithmetic unit, which is just an adder. Um, and, and those are four times the same thing in uh, Calwas still needs bitwise, so it's four slices. Four bits per. Yeah, so, so each of these, uh, A8 through A11, each of these four modules has uh, four bits of the central registers and four bits of the adder. Oh yeah, we forgot to say, 16-bit Yeah, it's a 16-bit computer. Right. All right. And then on your right. Yeah. So uh, 12 is parity checking, um, 13 is alarms, 14 is memory addressing, um, 15 is uh, interrupt servicing. Right. Um, and then the, the, the power supply with analog stuff. In yes. It. Yeah. So this is the 4 volt power supply up here. Okay. And then uh, down here on. Uh, a16. So uh, A16 starts the uh, the input output logic. Um, mm -hmm. So everything over here is dealing with uh, counters coming into the computer and signals going out. That's where. Oh, that's where the counters are. Yeah, hidden. the, the right. input output channels and the counters are all over here. Okay. Um, so which which makes sense because the connector to the exterior world is down here, right? That's mm -hmm. the one where you. Actually, everything goes through here, the the disky and yeah. all the counters yep. and okay. Yep. So the this big connector down here is the only interface between the computer and the rest of the spacecraft. Nice. So clean. All right. So sorry, I interrupted you. You were we were uh, on the. Uh, yeah. So we were on these guys. Um, yeah. I don't remember off the top of my head which input output modules do exactly what. Well, um, so twenty and twenty one mm. are the counter cells. Um, mm. So those are the ones that control the. Uh, famous cycle stealing instructions um, in the computer. Okay. Um, we'll have to explain what that is later <laughs> yeah. on. Um, and then up here we have the, uh, the interface modules. Um, so these are the ones that are doing the digital to analog for the interface connector. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end up here we have the 14 volt power supply for the memory. Is, is that... Uh, is there an actual D2A, or there are some D2As in there, there's or is it, or is it a conversion of le more level conversion? It, so there's level conversion, and then there's one uh, D2A circuit for the rotational hand controller. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Uh, and we, we just had a, a heated discussion about no, how, how many how many bits oh, is it truly a 16-bit computer? But it's, it's not really a 16-bit computer in the sense we would uh, understand it right. today, right? Yeah. So it is 15, 15 bits. bits right. Uh, so in in the memory, it's stored as 15 bits plus one parity bit. Right. But in the central registers, it is. Um, 
14 bits uh, for the number and then two sign bits. Uh, and the two sign bits, if they differ, uh, then the computer detects that there was an overflow in the calculation. So they, re they recycle bits. Right? Yeah. This one has the, it's at the time where you know, every trick you could do to save a, a bit or a memory position or a, mm -hmm. a, a, a transistor or a gate you would do. Um, okay, so it's a 16 bitish, at least 15 bits really. The, right. The, 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 the thing plus plus the parity mm -hmm. plus some tricks. Yep. Okay. Also, there were several versions of not only the block one but also the block two, which uh, that one is, mm -hmm. which is the one that got flown the manned mission, right? right? Because the Block one. This courier got aborted with the uh, Apollo one accid accident, and they only flew non-manned mission. And which version is this? So this is the first of three major versions of the the block two. Uh, mm -hmm. So the the part number is two thousand three one hundred. Uh, the first fifteen computers are of this module. So or of this model. Um, so this is serial number fourteen out of those fifteen. Okay, but uh, you you told you told me uh, earlier on that it, it you think it has been updated with some of the later uh, modification. Yeah, so the the tray A backplane has uh, wiring changes that look like they were done originally, so they're not hand reworked. Um, so this computer was was made apparently late enough uh, in uh -huh. the, the design process that the, the they knew all of the changes they wanted to make for the production computers okay. and so they put those changes into this prototype computer to test them out apparently so how you would characterize it as as a late prototype that's very close to yeah. the flown thing mm -hmm. and uh, so we suspect it can run uh, flown hard uh, software right yeah all of them can run all the flown software oh, okay uh, cool Th that's actually the module that this thing is famous for because it has ICs in it. Mm -hmm. Do they work? So far, we have a 100% success rate with the three modules with all of the gates, all of the chips in them. Right, and this one. Ready for the egg flip. Okay. All right, it's going up. Okay, you want those connectors in the middle. All right. Nice. It looks so much better than the block ones. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you, just, you can tell that they, they, by that time, they had really yeah. thought about it. And So should I do these? Just yeah, so this is a hermetic cover. So originally block one was not hermetic as I understand it and they in one of the Mercury missions discovered that when you put a human in the thing it starts to uh, it starts to get humid and and then they decided to change it to um, the actually the, the, they made the block one hermetic and then the block two was hermetic from the get go. Wow, you weren't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Gee wee. It's a good thing that um, backplanes are reliable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. <laughs> if we have and you checked all of this? Uh, I checked most of it. I checked everything that was unclear from the schematics or that uh -huh. differed between versions. Um, uh -huh. But I haven't, I haven't uh, beeped out every single pin. Hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Having watched, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's conceptually you, possible. You're slacking off. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the? Oh, those are components inside those green or yellow. No, no. no, no. Um, so these are just pieces of insulation that were pressed in to keep long wires from coming out. Oh, okay. So they they are actually non-functional. They are mechanical. Yes. Because I, I thought there were some resistor or diode Here. added. Oh, yes, on the other. Right 
Yeah, so okay. each, each of these uh, three yellow sleeves has a resistor and a diode in it. It was a fix for a problem they had in the core root memory. Okay. But but the the green stuff that I see there is, is uh, mechanical. Right. Uh, it's a beautiful backplane. And Mike, you have you have a complete re uh, no reverse engineering yep. ring of the backplane done available on the web at least, right? Yes. Where you have a tool and you you can ping a pin and it, it highlights the whole net. Yep. It's uh, accurate as far as I know. <laughs> you just cross-checked every pin with a continuity meter, so. <laughs> so everybody can go through the backplane of the Apollo guidance computer. Master can at work trying to power up the power supply. So should I start at the top of this? Or? So this is every, every solid tantalum in the computer. Um, so you'd start at the beginning of 830. Here. So that's this one? Yeah. And this is the power supply. <laughs> And, uh, as you can see, this is cordwood construction with welded wire, meaning the, the components are across. And you they come out the other side. And it's not soldered wire, it's welded. And, and the reason is that they had used PCBs and solder in the Polaris. A missile and found it unreliable so they went to cordwood with welded wire and got a factor 10 in the reliability better so that's what they use for the uh, Apollo. The little stencil tells you which components are where so it's not too bad for debug and Ken is checking the tantalum caps making sure there is no shorts that's what we'd be concerned about that one is short and takes a transistor with it. When we looked at the interface modules, every single capacitor was, if not spot on, it was we had a couple of percent and they were all good. So those look good. Yeah, so this is not consumer grade stuff, right? This has been mill spec and shaken and baked and accelerated aging, so they, they, would have, they should have checked for any, any uh, degradation mechanism. Every single one of these capacitors was x rayed for any potential defects. Right. It's, it's a nice compact pulse with modulated power supply, right? So it's a switch mode power supply. Drops the 28 volts from the spaceship to the to 14 and 4 14 and 4 volts. So there are two power supplies. They are identical but the when they are yeah, but when they are in the computer, the strapping changes what voltage they operate at. So one is a 14 volt and the other one is a 4 volt. Yeah, I see everything, everything seems to have a value. Okay. Oh. So then we strap it and power it up. So Ken and Mike kind of emulated the strapping that the power supply expects to see in the back plane. in the back plane, and that uh, you strapped it for fourteen four volts. Four, four volts. We'll, we'll we start with four and then we, we, work we, our we, way up. Okay. <laughs> we start conservative. Which is so in order here, we have the scope on which we hope to see the oscillator. And then that goes out power supply, output power, here, right? strapping, so, yeah. load. And then we have the, uh, the 28 volt power supply seriously limited in current here, so we don't... Uh, Mark wants anything. more power, I want less power. <laughs> well, we, we, so we, we decided, on, we we decided on set 7 watts max, so that, that might not start on that, but we'll see. Okay, so somebody turns it on. Three, two, one, left off. Eight, 80 milliamps. Yes, I see the pulses coming through. But your arm is right in front of it. 
What did you see the pulses? What's it? Four like volts. Four yeah, point zero nine. Four point zero nine. It's All right. High five can can you try to? Uh, trigger on channel two. No, uh, I mean, yeah, trigger on the yeah. exactly. Okay, so that's that's the oscillator for the PWM. So if I go, nothing's blown up. We have the pulses from the free running oscillator, and then we'll have to servo it to the, the computer oscillator eventually. It's four volts, and it's drawing 80 milliamps. So looks like 50 years after the fact. It's still a good power supply. I expected no less from no real flight rate and stuff. Excellent. All right, so one good power supply. All right, we have power on bus A. And we're running at 20 kilohertz here. Looks like we have 40 millivolts of, of ripple mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. these, these spikes. That well, are the, the spikes are normal because this is how it works. It's charged the capacitors mm -hmm. and... But still, filtering out the spikes is good. Right. Apple, Apple can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so now you have uh, rewired it for 14 volts, right? Yeah. So we expect to see it's the same power supply, different strapping. <laughs> yes. Go for it. Three, two, one. Six point thirty-nine volts. I will turn it off. Oh. It's, it's current limiting. It. Yeah. It's cur it was current limiting it yeah. because we are at, at 14 volts. We're drawing more. Right. Okay. So okay. So just. Power. Power. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and I I could see the PWM it came maxed out. Yeah, it's very wide. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, display limit. About a half an amp. Yeah. No, I think you're fine. Ready? Second try with more. Three, current. two, one. 14 volts. O2. My goodness. Oh, wow, that's accurate. Wow, the, the, the power sh supply sure works. How much current is it drawing? That's 350 so milliamps. So yeah, well, so we added, we limited, we added limited at 250 milliamps, it, which on, on at 14 it. volts, uh, the load took more. Now I'm going to check the, the ripple. So yeah. it looks like we've got 30 millivolts of ripple. Cameras taking pictures. Cameras taking pictures. <laughs> <of cameras. laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I think it's. Okay. Worse celebrating. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. And we don't really have certified measuring instruments, so in fact we don't even know for sure how far off it is. <laughs> right? I mean that's the that's that's true. True. <laughs> Jimmy bought it. Okay, in. well you, you pay for the calibration and uh, that's uh, exactly so actually yeah, my, my HPs are calibrated at Those are, yes. So, so what we should do is calibrate the scope to the power supply, since the power supply may be more accurate. <laughs> <laughs>